Good evening, it's uh, our Easter devotional. We've been thinking over the last week and a half about uh, the Gospel of Mark and what it tells us about the significance of the Easter story. We thought about how Jesus has all authority and yet uh, yesterday we turned a corner and we began to think about what the Gospel says about us. In Mark chapter 7, we noticed how the gospel makes very clear that the source of the problem, the source of wrong in this world, of sin in this world, is not out there. Rather, the source of sin is the heart. It's out of the heart that all sin and all problems come from. You, You need to stop pointing at everything else in this world and blame it for every wrong action you've been involved with and realize that the Bible says the problem is internal. The problem is inside you. Every one of us has this problem of sin. That we are messed up. Our desires are not what they should be. Uh, we're, we're twisted at the core of our being. And while that is extremely important and true, what makes the whole thing all the more serious is understanding the consequences that the Bible spells out that come to those who have this problem of sin at the core of their being. The Bible Just two chapters later, Mark chapter 9, begins to talk about the consequences of sin. And that's what I want us to think about tonight. I want to read Mark chapter 9 in verse 43 to 47. Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 43. Jesus said, And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell. Where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Here in this particular passage, Jesus uses very strong, indeed very gory language to try and make a point. And he wants the point to stick. He wants you to see that the sin that is in your heart is so damning that uh, verse 43, you would cut off your hand to Avoid that consequence. You would cut off your foot, verse 45. You would pluck out your eye, verse 46, rather than experience the consequences of sin. The end result of sin, we're told in these verses, is verse 44, hell. The unquenchable fire, verse 45, again, hell. Verse 48, hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. This is an eternal place of torment. It's the end result of sin. And the Bible doesn't tell us all the details about it, but it makes very clear that there is more, no more dreadful or imaginable place. Um, there, 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 there's no worse place that you could conjure up in your mind. Jesus, in effect, is saying if... If you only knew what was coming, if you only knew what was round the corner, you would do anything you could to avoid it. You would chop off arms, you would hack off feet, you would rip the eye out of your socket rather than to be found there in the end. Hell is a fearful place, Jesus makes very clear. But when we think about what he's saying in light of what we already have learnt from Mark chapter 7 last night, No bodily dissection is going to be enough. You could chop off your hand for doing wrong things. You could hack off your feet for going to wrong places. You could gouge out your eye for looking at wrong things that you shouldn't be. But really, we heard last night, that's not the issue, is it? It's not your hand, it's not your foot, it's not your eye, it's your... Yeah, it's your heart that's the problem. The heart is the wellspring of life. It's, it's the place that everything else comes from. And it's not your hand, your foot or your eye that has caused you to do anything wrong. It's your heart. It's who you are. 
And, it, and if you were to cut that out, there would be no more of you about. You'd be dead. No human surgery is enough here. Only divine surgery can deal with this immense problem. And Jesus hasn't told us this passage in order that we would lose limbs. Rather, he's told us this truth so that you would realise that you need a new heart. But that the rest of the Bible makes clear that new heart is only found in Christ. Psalm 51, verse 10, create in me, Lord, a clean heart. That's what you need, a, a renewed heart today. And that, that that treatment is only found in Jesus Christ. That's why, that's why Easter is such an important time of year for Christians. Because they come to realise that they can't fix this, this problem of sin themselves. They can't remove the rot of a heart, but God can. Because Jesus came into this world and lived that perfect life, your rotten heart can be removed. And replaced with a, a spiritual heart, a, a, a heart that, that looks to please and to honour God. Tonight, if you realise that you are a sinner and you hear that the consequences of sin are serious, acknowledge that, but don't stop there. Come, come to Jesus. The one who can heal broken hearts. The one who can perform that surgery that you can't yourself. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you that knowing the wickedness of our heart, how rotten it was, he gave us life that we could be forgiven if our trust is found in him. Help us, Lord, to, to accept the, the truth of scripture to hear its warning of the consequences of sin that we would all the more earnestly run to jesus christ the healer of broken hearts for it's in jesus name we pray amen